Welcome to Super Talk, the podcast that scratches your superhero itch. Just two suburban dads nerding out over superhero stuff on the small screen and the big. Buckle up, people. Enjoy the ride. Welcome to the Halloween special, YouTube. Let's get this party started. I'm not going to be able to wear this mask the whole time. <laughs> How do I look? As ridiculous as I feel? Fantastic. That's awesome. Fantastic. Right, let me know when you're ready. Uh, all right. I'm ready. In three... Welcome to Super Talk, the spooky weekly podcast dedicated to news and reviews of comic book media on the big and small screen. My name is Spooky Professor Pettis, <laughs> and with me, as always, is my illustrious co host, Titanium Tony Estrella. Titanium! Hey, Professor! Having a little technical difficulties here. Little issues with the mics, um, you know, the ghouls and ghosts in here have uh, been screwing with our headsets, but all is well, all is back up and running. Professor, welcome to the Halloween episode. I, I, I'm not going to be able to wear this mask the whole time. If you check us out on, on uh, YouTube, we, we look... Uh, Ridiculous. You, you actually look no, great. What are, you, what are you wearing there? Yeah, if uh, Icarus from uh, The Eternals was... Balding and or had to wear glasses to uh, help his vision, then uh, I might I might pass off uh, as it. But uh, hey, I'm no Captain America either, so uh, I think we're both in the same boat. Professor, take us to school. All right. Well, before we uh, get started, we want to thank the listeners that bring the show to you, and those are our patrons. patreoncom slash talk. That's how you become a patron. As we mentioned last week, we're going to do a really big giveaway for all the people who are patrons of the show. Uh, when we get to our milestone anniversary episode, we're going to do another giveaway. So if you want to join, patreon.com slash supertalk and really help us out. That'd be great. Absolutely. Thank you, boys and girls. Uh, we really appreciate it. Hey, uh, listen up here. We got a great episode here. We're going to go over uh, everything you need to know for the Eternals before the movie. Uh, the professor is going to drop some serious knowledge. So take out your... Your notebooks, get your pen ready, uh, number two pencil for those that desire, and uh, take some serious notes because he's going over everything uh, from the comic book lore to the power sets of each Eternal and going over each Eternal. So you kind of get you up to speed before you see the movie. And I was talking to Greg Veyer, our biggest fan, um, and he was excited about this episode because he really doesn't know a whole lot about the Eternal. So he was really looking forward to it. Yeah, and as we, uh, I think, mentioned previously, I think Marvel really didn't have a, a, a grand plan or big plans for the Eternals as characters. I think they uh, had plans to kind of introduce the Inhumans into the MCU uh, many years ago, and they kind of had to change those plans a little bit when uh, that Inhumans uh, television show really kind of did not do well. And so they said, hey, let's... Oh, it bombed. Yeah. It bombed. It bombed. Yeah. And they decided to pick another, you know, another team of characters, and, and they wanted to kind of introduce some of the space-based, kind of galactic, universal kind of beings out there, That something that they could introduce as some big threats, and we'll, we'll, we're definitely going to go over that. And I, I think that's exactly what this movie is set to do. It's, it's to introduce us to these kind of cosmic entities and the, kind of the grand scheme of the universe yeah. uh, that makes up the MCU. So, cool. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, start with some uh, reviews. Uh, not a lot of uh, brand new content this week. We did get a couple of things. I, I did get a chance to watch this. I don't know if you got to see. So um, Disney Plus has been releasing uh, the Marvel Legends series and then the, the Marvel it's uh, Studios Assembled series. So the Legends right. series is something that they've been doing to kind of... Quick get, clips to get people up to speed on what's going on and how they put things together, right? Yeah, so they're doing that uh, for every kind of big movie and, and every big kind of Disney Plus show. Just so you, if you don't remember who these characters are, let's reintroduce them to you. And again, it's just rehashing some of the clips of the movies they've been in. Uh, we, we got them for Falcon and Winter Soldier and Black Widow and Wanda and Vision, all the other ones that we had seen before. I do believe they're coming out with uh, the Hawkeye episode is coming out and being released on that Disney Plus day. Um, the same day that I believe uh, Shang Chi is being dropped on Disney Plus as well. So, yeah. uh, sometime in mid-November, we're going to get both of those. So that'll be November seventeenth. 
Yep, so that'll be a big uh, way for you to kind of get introduced, reintroduced to Hawkeye if you've forgotten who he is. Um, but they do have that Marvel uh, Studios Assembled series, which is really a recap, uh, kind of behind the scenes making of episodes. We've gotten them for all the Disney Plus series thus far. Um, and they just did one for the What If series. And it was really, number one, really good to see how they not only came up with the characters that they were going to have in the show and the stories that they decided to pull from, but also the art style and the animation style they decided to go with was very, you know, reminiscent of, of Norman Rockwell. That was kind of like the the, the yeah. type, type of art that they wanted to do. And it was a really good uh, uh, show. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, Marvel Studio Assembled Making of What If. Um, and Kevin Feige was on there a lot. And he was really talking about not only um, what they were able to do with this season, but the blank canvas that the What If show gives them to kind of explore these kind of crazy ideas and not really draw from comic book lore necessarily, but hey, what if we just wanted to do this thing, right? Yeah, um, what if, right? Yeah. I mean, like, twist the story just a little bit to have a different outcome. I, th I thought it was really brilliant. Yeah, and they, they talked about uh, some plans for season two. So we know that season two has been greenlit. They're already starting to work on that. They do have the storyboards and storylines in place for what they're going to do with next season. And from what we understand, what they told us in this episode was that uh, the relationship between the Watcher and Captain Carter is, is going to be even more pronounced in this next season. So she's oh. going to be continuing to play a big role in that, that, that ep those episodes going forward, which is great. Yeah, I think he had... Uh... That, that relationship was obviously a little bit more special than the other characters, so I thought it was cool. Yeah, very good. And uh, I wanted to give everybody a little bit of a, kind of my first impressions of the new season of Young Justice dropped on uh, HBO Max uh, the day of uh, the DC fandom, and uh, the first four episodes, I believe, have been released now. They come out every Friday. We got the first two the first week, and then they've had two more since then. And to give everybody the, their, my first impressions of that that uh, this season, um, I'm kind of a little disappointed, and also it seems to be a little bit slow so far. The it, the first four episodes have been on Mars, which they call Mars in in the DC uh, universe, um, and that's where uh, Martian Manhunter's from. It's also where McGann, who is uh, Ms. Ms. Man Ms. Martian Manhunter or Ms. Martian. Um, She's uh, getting married to Connor Kent, and they go to Mars to, for the wedding, and there's all this kind of, there's a plot, and they're talking about the diff three different races of Martians and how they don't get along, and there's a caste system, and, and it's been really strange, and I really haven't thought it's great so far. I'm kind of waiting for the plot to pick up. I'm like, where are they going with this, and can we just get off this planet and get back to, like, right. fighting universal stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, yeah, it's been a little slow so far. So if you guys are, are watching that or are you planning on watching it, stick with it. Yeah, don't don't be surprised if you you're, you're kind of wondering where they're going with it because that's what I'm wondering too. All right, well let's uh, jump into uh, the news section. We've got a few items this week. Um, you mentioned something about news about Nova. Yeah, there's uh, it, and it's a pretty credible source from what I'm telling uh, from what I'm I'm reading online, but. Yeah, Nova uh, is supposed to start production in 2023, uh, which, if that is true, uh, leads me to believe that they will probably introduce him in Guardians of the Galaxy um, or, or sooner. So that's kind of exciting. I mean, these so is that an official like green light announcement for Marvel or some behind the scenes credible source that basically is behind the scenes credible source? It's okay. not a green light from Marvel. Um, we know. You know, Fantastic Four, Blade, um, you know, those things are, are definitely in the works. Um, but this was, Marvel was, um, we've always said, yeah, we've that always thought that they're going to do a Nova yeah. movie, right? Yeah. Uh, Nova from Xandar, and apparently he survived the attack. He was one of the only survivings of the attack. And, and uh, I hope that he's in Guardians of the Galaxy, and the rumor's pretty credible. So we'll see. But again, it's just a rumor at this time. So that, well, yeah, and, and I guess we can only hope that during D23, you know, my, my gut tells me, you know, Disney Plus Day is going to give us a lot of information about Marvel's plans for their Disney Plus series in the near future. I think we're going to get some release dates centered around the series that we know are coming, the ones that they've already announced. We'll get some release dates for those that we don't know quite yet, like Ms. Marvel and Moon Knight and She-Hulk, and we'll get some release yeah. dates for those. Um, but that's really going to be focused on the Disney Plus content. Um, 
the Marvel movies in the kind of the phase four, rest of phase four slash early phase five stuff, I'm hoping they make some of those announcements at D23. We're probably going to get some trailers for some of these properties as well during that time frame. But we'll, we'll get an announcement that uh, uh, Shang-Chi 2 is going to go into production as well. They'll get a green light for that one. I think one. so. This, it came out with this rumor about Nova, so I, I think so. So those would be two projects that they would be very excited to announce during D23. That, right. That you know, we're not only uh, green lighting a uh, Shang-Chi 2, which would... I think would be widely accepted because of how successful that movie was. But then to have some announcement about, hey, we plan to start filming a Nova movie in 2023, that'd be a huge announcement, and it would be like an early Phase 5 film. Now, to your point, Titanium, why don't they, you know, kind of like introduce that character somehow... In an earlier film, and Guardians would be the, the film that makes sense. I, you know, James Gunn has come out and said uh, on Twitter that, he, that he's going to introduce a lot of new characters moving forward in the MCU. And I think I think not only Adam Warlock, but I think Nova will be one of those characters. So Excited about it. I mean, that, that's uh, yeah. Rick Ryder, Nova, that, that's a... Uh, a, uh, a character we've we've been waiting to see come to the MCU, and, and again, the more space-based kind of cosmic threats that they face, the more likelihood of a character like Nova being relevant and one they, they would want to inter- introduce into the MCU. Yeah, Richard Ryder, right? I think Rick yeah. or Richard. Richard. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I he's one of. I mean, some of the concept art from Nova is cool as shit. I mean, he's just a badass. So I would love for them to introduce Nova. That's. For me, that is my um, cosmic Captain America. You know? <laughs> that's my cosmic Captain America. Yeah. So, Star Wars up there too. But that's my Iron Man, a cosmic Iron Man. But uh, Nova is my cosmic Captain America. Well, and, and there's a, you know another thought there that it may not be Richard Ryder version of Nova. Maybe another one. There's been several versions of Nova. The and young kid that he took under his wing, right? Yeah, and, and he ended up becoming part of the Young Avengers. So, uh, hey, if they're setting that team up, you know, hey, a young, young hero, Nova, coming into... Uh, the MCU could be a Young Avengers uh, introduction there. You got to take the mask. I got to take this mask off. I'm dripping. <laughs> I'm sweating my ass off. <laughs> Titanium does leak. Yes. Excellent. Okay. What else we got, Professor? Well, you had a rumor about uh, another rumor about Balder the Brave coming to a movie, coming to Doctor Strange movie. That's a strange place for him. Not strange, needless to say, but strange place for him to show up. I, I, I agree. Um, he's the brother, half-brother of Thor, uh, Balder, uh, apparently an unbelievable warrior. Um, where has he been? Um, he's one character that's been missing from the, the Thor movies and the Asgardian lore. We've seen the Warriors 3, we've seen Lady Sif, we've seen a bunch of the other characters that are prominently featured in Asgardian uh, you know, myths and as well as the Thor comics. In the Thor movies, but we haven't seen Balder, so it's it's not surprising this would be a character they would want to introduce into that that team. But I, you know, hey, again, where's he been? That's a good question. Yeah, so that that's going to be kind of exciting. But hey, if they bring him in, Thor's half brother, uh, and I know in the comics uh, Loki killed him at one point, and then he came back, had to fight his way out of Hela. Um, he's a badass warrior. Uh, that'll be interesting. So yeah, kind of a, a credible source there too. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying, but their track record, like some of these rumors are just nuts. Like their track record for these guys are 50%. These guys that I'm hearing this from are actually, you know, 80, 90%. So kind of credible insiders, maybe, but that'd be kind of cool. Wouldn't that be a cool character? Yeah. I, again, I, I, I guess maybe that's one way that they feel they can introduce that character is in a movie like uh, Dr. Strange and the Multiverse of Madness because he hasn't been around and maybe yeah. in our version of the multiverse, Balder doesn't exist, and that's why we haven't seen him. And maybe in some other version, he does, and yeah. and, he, and he comes in that way. Who knows? Great, yeah, yeah. bring it on. Uh, I I'd like to see it. And then you've got some uh, new character details for Titan season four. So we mentioned earlier. Uh, so Titan season three ended last week. Uh, they've already been greenlit for season four. That is coming, and then they've made some announcements about some of the the, ba- the, the big bads. To be honest coming. with you, the the big bads that I only recognize on here is Blood Brother. The rest of them, I, brother, I, brother Blood, Brother Blood. I'm sorry, yeah. uh, I don't know uh, Mother Mayhem or Jinx. 
Me either. Yeah. yeah so so uh, they're kind of really unknown big bads. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but that's exciting news that they have some uh, villains that they haven't introduced yet, which excites me because then it's not like that same old storyline that you know and you're always comparing the Joker or the Riddler or, or to other people's perception. Well, they had to, of they it. had to pull out the Scarecrow this, yeah, this season yeah. to kind of be a big bad for them and not really a, a, a Titans, you know, specific villain uh, or Teen Titans specific villain. Uh, it was one of Batman's, you know, villains, right? Yeah, but so. been played on the big screen and small screen before. So sure. I'm always looking at that actor's interpretation of them or the direction that he's giving on portraying these characters. So these characters, it's like a fresh slate, right? Yeah. So it kind of goes along with Titans, fresh slate for the end of season three. They wrapped up some of the storylines. And again, I, I just have to question some of the writing on this show. You know, when season uh, season two, which was by far the best season of that show, uh, that was a season with Deathstroke and his kids, which was just fantastic. That was good. They ended that season. Jericho, that whole storyline oh, was, was so cool. Fantastic. And they ended that season with, um, with a teaser of Blackfire basically coming to Earth you know, kind of angry, and she's basically going to, you know, kill her sister so she can take over the throne. And I was like, whoa, this is awesome. And then they completely changed that this season, and they became friends, and they were, like, teammates and liked each other. And I'm like, that's not the way it's supposed yeah. to be. Blackfire comes to Earth to try to kill her. I mean, come on, that's what's supposed to happen. So I think maybe they decided they changed course while they were writing the season. No, 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 that's not what we want to do with this character. We're like, okay. So, multiple villains, maybe multiple storylines. Yeah. It might help the show. For sure. All right, well, good news. All right, well, let's uh, jump right to our topic of the week this week. And, uh, of course, that's brought to you by our friends over at Studio GG Studios, home of the man band, Corn on the Cob. Out from the uh, flood, they've uh, fortified their, their studio, and now they're going to be back in business here. Yeah, I'll, I'll, you see the picture right here? I put it up right here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I got a shot of the new epoxy floor that they put in. So yeah, they're coming along. Should be should be uh, very soon. I say a couple of weeks. Studio GG Studios will be up on their feet and rocking out as usual. All right, we can't wait to see Buffalo Tim. We know that's going to be their It'll next, be here. next next big release. Yep. All right. Well, we've got uh, topic of the week this week is really to dive in the history of the Eternals. So the Eternals movie is releasing a week from uh, last Friday. So it'll be this Friday coming up, November fifth. Um, you and I will not be in town and no. will likely be... We're, we're going to uh, Key West for yeah. a couple of days for yeah. a good friend of ours, Amy Kelly's 50th birthday. About 20 couples. Uh, it'll be fun. We're going to do a little fishing, right? And uh, some drinking, probably, no. maybe? No. no it's, it's, oh, we're not gonna I think it's that? dry weekend. Dry weekend? Okay. Dry weekend. Oh, that's all right with me. Yeah. Then I'll go to the movie in Key West. <laughs> no, I'll probably see it uh, Sunday night when we yeah, get back. Yeah, I, I don't think any of us would, would pray for a rain day in Key West. But if no. it ever happened... Yeah, you know. <laughs> we got a backup plan. But yeah, we'll be seeing that movie as soon as we can when we get back, for sure. Uh, but that movie does come out this Friday. We want to give the audience a little bit of a kind of a refresher on who these characters are. Now, yeah. I'm going to caveat that with uh, a couple things. I'm going to talk about the Eternals... In the comic books, like where did they come from? Which What's the professor their... has a eternal comic up on uh, set here right now, right? Yeah, and so we're going to go into their history in the comic books. You know how they were created, why they were created, kind of the comic history. Then we'll kind of get into each of the characters specifically, and we'll talk a little bit about the differences between their comic rendition and what they're doing with the movies. The yeah. movie decided to take these characters. And I think they're drawing a lot from the story that we'll tell. And I don't know that for sure. I haven't seen the movie. I, I, I don't know any of this at all. We're making some assumptions here based on the trailers that we've seen. But I think they're going to draw a lot from the comic history. And there's going to be some of the things that I'm going to talk about that are being in there. A few gender swaps here and there. There are a couple. And we'll but talk through that. I'm all right with that. Yeah. That makes sense. That yeah. I get that. Yeah, and a very, uh, very diverse cast as well. Um, I think many, many different uh, races... Creeds, colors, religions, all represented across the sexual Eternals orientation. Team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All of it. Wow. Yeah. So once this, again, okay with that. Yep. And so we'll kind of talk through that. We'll and we'll also and what they've done in the movies is they've given each Eternal kind of a unique ability. Um, in the comics, they all collectively shared a lot of abilities, and but they did have one or two things that they did special to themselves, and we'll kind of talk through that a little bit. We'll cut, just go through some of those differences, though. Very cool. Yeah. I think people are waiting for this. 
All right, so just a brief history about um, a, at the creation of the universe, uh, there was a, a, a being called Eternity. And Eternity created these beings called Celestials. And the Celestials were, their job was to seed and experiment on life throughout the universe. So their whole purpose is to create life on planets, cultivate that life, and to experiment on them. And that's kind of what they were doing. So they went to planet to planet and they would, you know, create life. And then they come back and check a, a you know, few million years later and see how things are going. Celestials, these yeah. big, giant creatures. Giant, giant beings. And, we're, and we know we're going to see them in the movie for sure. sure. Um, so the Celestials came to Earth about a million years ago. And this was at the dawn of man. So mm -hmm. this is when... You know, apes first, you know, started walking on two feet and all of a sudden were, you know, gaining some intelligence and ability to create, you know, uh, weapons and, and tools and things like that. And they're like, oh, this is an interesting uh, evolution of a, uh, of a species. Let's go check them out. So they came to Earth a million years ago and that was called the first celestial host. So when the celestials visit Earth, it's called a celestial host. They're coming to Earth to kind of do their job and do things here. And one of the things they did a million years ago was they experimented on mankind. They basically, yeah. they basically subjected these early Cro-Magnon humans and to their you know experiments. And during the experimentation, they created two different um, other species. They created the deviants, yeah. which was kind of well, what if we take some of these genetics of a human being and and twist them in kind of like weird ways? And they created the deviants that way. And then another celestial. Uh, did some experimentation on the humans and created what he felt was like the perfect version of a human, which are the Eternals. Right. And so he created about um, there's it wasn't it wasn't many. It's was like twenty to fifty of each each of them. And then they he left them there. The Eternals left them there, and they gave him explicit instructions. They said, "You are not to procreate, so you're not supposed to create more versions of yourself, mm -hmm. and you're not supposed to interfere." With, with the human with race. the human kind, right? Not not supposed to interfere or mess with them at all. Just leave them to be themselves. And then what ended up happening is they were left the celestials left and left the eternals and deviants here. And and for the most part, they followed their instructions. However, the deviants created a city of their own, a very a hidden city, and they started procreating. And they created thousands of them. Uh, that was not really what they were supposed to be doing. Yeah. The eternals found out about this, and some of those deviants. Um, started attacking humans and killing humans and eating humans and there's and, a leader of the deviants, correct? Yes, Crow. Right, but he wasn't the original leader of the deviants. That's who he is in in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, but what happened is the Eternals were fighting against them, trying to protect humankind from the deviants, but they were basically being overrun. I mean, there was just too many of them, and so they had no choice but to call the Celestials and say, "Hey, we need your help. Something's going really wrong here." The Celestials came back to Earth, and this was a second Celestial host, and they came to Earth and they basically killed off most of the Deviants, almost almost all of them. Some of the Eternals, but they kept a lot of the Eternals around, but they killed off most of humankind. And this also resulted in the sinking of Atlantis going underneath the ocean. So that, that, that was responsible for Atlantis going under the ocean. Atlantis was a big city above the ocean, and the second celestial host caused it to fall into the ocean. Um, but the, the Eternals were able Which to... Which is a storyline I think we're going to get in the Wakanda Forever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. So the, um, the Eternals were able to you know, keep safe a certain number of human beings and save them from this devastation and you know, kept them safe during the celestial host so that they could then repopulate the earth and that's what they did they kind of helped them and then over the next several years the eternals definitely helped humankind and they would do things like you know teach them how to create you know weapons teach them how to create housing teach, you know you know turn you know dry riverbeds into, into flowing rivers to right. make help their their civilizations um, farm area, thrive yeah. right um so that's what the celestials uh, the uh, eternals the were eternals, doing yeah. there right and uh, they were given the task by the Celestials after the second Celestial host to um, watch over and protect the human race. And that's kind of why they're here. Um, some unique things about the Eternals. They, uh, they, 
their city was called Olympi Olympia. And while they were in their city of Olympia, they um, gained the attention of the Olympic gods of Olympus, oh. right? Of the Greek gods. And the Greek gods, you know, felt found they had a lot in common and they shared a lot of the same ideals, you know, that they depended on man, they were there to protect man, and, they, and the Greek gods needed the worship of man for them to be successful, right? right? For them to, to thrive, man needed to worship them. So they, uh, they formed a partnership and the Greek gods said, hey, why don't you guys kind of be like our ver the version of ourselves on earth, on earth and people will think you're us but you know you're the Eternals and we're Greek gods. But you know they'll see if they see you, they'll they'll you'll be reminded of of a, of a Greek god, and that that will give them faith, right? And right. They'll, they'll pray to us, um, and that's when Athena actually changed her name from her. She used to have a different name, but she changed her name to Athena to kind of be more representative of Athena, the Greek god. Right. So um, anyway, so that's kind of a there's a unique tie there that in the comic books there is history of the two of those groups working together and being partners. Nice. Um, they do have, uh, in the comic books, one of the, the unique things about the Eternals is they... And I don't know if we're going to see this in the movie at all. I think we do. I, I think there's a scene where they're kind of all floating and there's like electricity connecting them at, at the scene of that. I think we're oh, going to see On the see beach that. or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they're sitting around the table... Can I tell people what it is first before you... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so they, they have the ability to combine... Um, the, the will and intelligence of each of the Eternals into a single entity called the Unimind. Right. And they can basically, you know, it's kind of like Wonder Twin Powers act, activate. They they get together and, they, you know, it's like forming Voltron. Yeah, they, right? they link up, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, they can create, they can connect to each other and they become one being called the Unimind. And it's extremely powerful. Powerful enough that it could fight off a Celestial if it had to. So... Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the movie. I, you know, Titanium saying that he might have seen some scenes in some of the trailers. That I think might so. I lead think, us to believe that we well, see the Unimind at some point in time. At some point, not just the Unimind to fight off the Celestials or to become extremely powerful, but they use it to to be all of one mind, so that their I guess their focus on what they're doing and their objective is all of one mind, right? And we'll see. That'd be that'd be great. That'd be awesome. And one of the reasons why they're called the Eternals is they. Um, have the ability to resurrect um, each other. So if they die, they die in battle, they die, you know, they, some, something happens to them and they, they can be re reincarnated, basically. They go into these little capsules and then they, their bodies get remade and then they, their consciousness is, is back in their bodies and wow. they have a new body. So they're, they're not... And they use the Unimind to do that? No, I, they don't. No, it's just they an just, ability they have, oh, right? right? So... Uh, and I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, they have the ability to, you know, and they're not, they do functionally live thousands of years, but if they ever, for some reason, something happened to them, they could just be reincarnated. Oh. They could cre get a new body and they're back back in business. So Interesting. it's happened many times. Yeah, in the comics. So that's kind of like the comic book history of the Eternals, which is kind of, you know, general history of them as, as, a, as a group and the characters. Um, so here's what we know about the movie, and we, you know, kind of, we're drawing some things from. Scenes we've seen in in the, the trailers, some of the clips that Marvel's released to us, you know, kind of giving us some background on each of these characters. Um, we know that they were they were brought to Earth thousands of years ago. This is what they tell us in the trailer um, to watch over mankind yeah. and protect them from the deviants. So we we believe the deviants are on Earth. We've seen them in the trailers, and that the Eternals are there to not interfere with man. They've been instructed not to interfere with man in the affairs but of in man. The, in the trailer, it kind of looks like they do uh, kind of interact with man. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. They interact, that. right? But they're, they're not there to interfere, right? Like if, if, if man is, is you know, fighting a war against each other, they're not supposed to favor one side and help one side out versus yeah. the other, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, I think there's a scene where... I believe Druig is upset about it, and and uh, Ajax says, you know, don't don't do anything. We're not supposed to interfere. Yeah. So they've been instructed by the Eternals, only interfere in the affairs of man when the deviants are involved. If the deviants are involved, you can, you know, you you have get involved free will to go in there and, and protect man. But if they're not, stay away and leave I, them alone. They even say that there's a scene where. Um, um, the Black Knight is Dane talking. Whitman. Yeah, he's talking and he says, why didn't you help with Thanos? We were instructed not to interfere. So that's interesting. Yeah, by who? And they said the Eternal. He talks about, they talk about the, uh, uh, Celestial. the Celestials, yeah. right? Um, right, and so 
again, we, we, we see that they fight the Deviants several times in the trailers, and we assume that that's something that's going to happen in the movies. All right, well, let's go over some of the individual characters that we have that are going to be no, ones that we know are in the movie, right? The right. individual uh, Eternals characters themselves. So in the movie, um, Ajak, who's played by Selma Hayek, is... <laughs> Smoke show. She is, in the movies, the de facto leader of the Eternals. Um, in the comics, it's a male character, um, Ajax. So that is one right. that they gender, gender swapped, swapped, right? Yeah. So that's it's a male character in the comics. Okay with that. I'm, yep. <laughs> you know I'm okay with that. And in the comics, uh, Ajax can fly, can shoot energy blasts from his hands, um, and uh, has the ability to communicate with the Celestial. So that is one unique ability that Ajax had, was uh, he could... Communicate with the Celestials. In the movies, uh, very similar, but it's a female character. She can communicate directly with the Celestials. So if they ever have to talk to the Celestials or communicate or get messages from the Celestials, she's the one who gets them. Right. Um, and it's considered their spiritual leader, right? Right. Spiritual leader. And, More of a thinker, not a fighter. Right. And But her powers in the movies are kind of healing powers. So if somebody gets hurt, you know, she can heal them. Um, that's kind of her power set in the movies. Um, and again, a gender swapped role, but that's who's uh, Selma Hayek's playing. Uh, then we have Icarus, who is uh, being played by James Madden. Um, in the comics, he has flight, super strength, uh, psionics. He does have the. And many of the Eternals in the comics do have some psionic ability, like telekinetic powers and, and telepathy powers. Yeah. Um, he has that in the comics, but he can shoot, you know, cosmic ray energy blasts from his eyes. So that's everybody's wondering, well, you know, Superman shoots like red beams out of his eyes. What comes out of Icarus's eyes? It's actually cosmic energy that's coming directly out of his eyes. They all have cosmic energy, right? Yeah. So the Sorcerer Supreme has a different kind of energy, and then um, yeah, their energy. And again, I think they're doing this in the movies as well. Is drawn directly from from the cosmos, right? They're they're given cosmic energy by the Eternals, and I believe you know the way that the movies manifesting those powers is in these kind of golden shapes and forms and yeah. everything they got that they have and, and that's but that's the cosmic energy flowing through them that they've been they've been granted or gifted um but he's virtually identical in the movies um you know he is not the leader but he is the strongest and and most capable of all the you know he's kind of think of him as you know the superman of of the eternals definitely uh, a strong and capable fighter and is one of the ones that's out in front whenever there's any trouble their lead warrior right mm -hmm. Uh, the next one is Kingo. Um, in the comics, he has uh, superhuman str uh, strength, like all the Eternals, but he prefers to fight as a samurai. So he trained with the samurai, and he's an incredible, incredible swordsman in the comic book. So that's kind of his... He, Although he does have superhuman strength like most of the Eternals does, he prefers to fight in the way that the samurai do. So he doesn't use some of his internal powers when he fights. That's kind of his powers in the comic books. In the movie, um, he has he can it looks like he can manipulate and generate energy blasts that come out of his hands, like bolts of energy that come out of his hands, and he's one of the fighters yeah. that's in the movie. Cool. Right. Um, Makari, also in the comics, um, is a male character in the comics. This is another one they gender swapped. Um, superhuman speed is kind of the unique power that Makari has in the comic books. Uh, same uh, in in. Uh, in the movie, but it's a female character. So it's yeah. a female character, and I believe she's deaf. She is deaf. Yeah, yeah. she's a deaf uh, female character, um, but she has super speed, and, and that's the same uh, power she has uh, in the comics. But it's, again, a female character uh, and a male character in the comics. That's one of the other ones they did gender swap. Super speed. Yep, super speed. Uh, Fastos, um, in the comics, he has basically heat blasts that come out of his hands. He can create these intensely hot blasts of energy from his hands that create these high intense um, levels of heat. Um, in the movies, it's being changed. Uh, this is now being played by an African-American actor. Uh, also plays the character in the movies is uh, is a gay character as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a, another kind of uh, way they've introduced diversity into this cast. Um, in the movies, the powers that Fastos has are... He's the kind of the inventor of the group, right? Yeah, he's he's like the uh, engineer. He he's the one that takes care of their ship. It looks like, uh, and he's the one that can manipulate uh, the ship and the things to do. I think he's like the. Uh, I don't think he's much of a fighter in the movie. I no. think he's more of one of the thinkers. But his thing is, he can he can basically create any object that he can think of. Like he just can just he has these great uh, you know 
engineering mind. He can think of a machine that needs to be built, and then he can build it out of thin air with his powers. It's nice. really, really crazy. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait to see that in movies. It's going to be really cool. Um, Pixie, uh, in the comic books, um, kind of has a lot of the same powers a lot of the Eternals have, you know, superhuman speed and strength and, and endurance and all those other things, but is actually thought of as one of the weaker Eternals. Mm-hmm. Um, in the comic books, is is definitely seen looked down upon by the other Eternals because, you know, she's not as, as strong as them, and, and she's, you know, kind of a little bit of a... You know, like is this played by the little kid in the yes, the, the, the little girl lady? In, yeah, yeah, in, in, in the movies, um, in the comics though, she does have uh, something she created called pixie dust, which she can throw on any creature and it turns it to stone for a period of time. It's not indefinite, but it can turn things into stone. So that's one thing that she has in the comics. In the uh, movie, uh, her character is again played by a very young girl, uh-huh. um, s- small character, but she has the ability to create illusions, very similar to what Loki can do, create right. like these illusions and can make all the Eternals invisible if they're walking through town so nobody can see them and can generate basically illusions. Yeah, I think at some point in the trailer you see her creating fireworks and then there's a bus being thrown and she turns it into red butterflies no, or something. No, that's not her that turns it into red Oh, butterflies. it's not? No. Is, is that's that Cersei true? that turns it into oh, red okay. butterflies. Yeah. I thought it was her because she's yeah. like protecting she was standing next to dane whitman yeah 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 that's why i thought it was her yeah no it was cersei that walked up and changed it and we'll talk about why that okay. is yeah um so cersei the next one um in the comics she has a healing factor telepathy telekinesis she can project images uh matter transmutation and that's her power in the uh, comics okay and so that's her powers in the movies as well she has the ability to transmute any form of matter into some other form of matter. And so that's why it was her that, you know, touched the bus and changed it from the bus into red rose petals. So it wouldn't hurt her. Right. Yeah. But she has the ability. And then you see, there's another scene in the trailer, I believe, where she puts her hand on the dirt and basically start and water starts flowing because she's converting the dirt into water basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she can convert anything from one form of matter to another. And that's a very important power. It's a cool power. Yeah. And I think in the movies, it's probably going to play a very big role in a lot of different things, yeah. right? And uh, and again, this is one character that I do believe is um, going to continue on past this movie in, a, in some pretty big roles. Cersei was a member of the Avengers for, for several years. Um, and, and she's ve- the one in the love triangle, right? Between Icarus... In the and, movie. Yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah. be cool. Yeah. And I guess in the movie, her and Icarus had a relationship for thousands of years but then eventually decided to go in their own ways and and when uh you know cersei's working in london at the natural history museum she meets dane whitman and they start dating and then we see icarus shows up a little bit later and you know it's kind of an awkward situation awkward. right old boyfriend is showing up right? yep. yeah your ex is here oh by the way he's got superpowers <laughs> he can fly and shoot beams out of his eyes yeah right? that's tough to get over um the next one is thena um, so in the comics, smoke uh, show, yeah, superhuman, uh, and this is a female in the comics as well. Superhuman s- strength, speed, stamina, agility, and reflexes. So she is just kind of like this crazy, incredible, athletic, you know, you know, badass, right? And she's a, a, an incredible warrior in the comic books as well. Um, in the movie, uh, she's also an incredible warrior, but she her superpowers are the ability to create weapons. Um, that's kind of you with see, the cosmic energy. She creates these cosmic energy weapons, yeah. like swords and spears and and daggers and all kinds of other stuff. She can just create them out of thin air, um, and so that'll be a really cool power to see as well. But she's supposed to be the, the kind of the, the 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 top warrior of the group of Eternals. Um, and I guess at one point in time, she trained some human warriors or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, and and so we'll, I think we'll hear about that. So. Interesting. In the movie, there's a scene where the leader of the deviants is like holding her, and her eyes are all whited out. And I know, at, in, I think in the comics, didn't they have a relationship? Like they, he was soft on her or something, right? Yeah, he Crow kind w- of dug her a little at bit. At the time, Crow was the leader of the deviants, and they had a kind of a. Kind of a, a forbidden relationship between the two of them, and, uh, and I don't know if that's going to be something that they explore in the comic yeah. in the in the movie, but it definitely happened in the comics. You know, they kind of fell in love with each other, and they're like, "We're not supposed to like like each other because we're you know you're a deviant and I'm an eternal, and that's not supposed to happen." Yeah. But you know, we'll see if like they have some type of previous relationship in the movies. That'll be Bizarre. interesting. Yeah. But okay, I'm I'm that's another storyline I'm curious. To. Yeah. Um, Gilgamesh, um, in the comics, uh, same as it is in the movie. This is a character that has, uh, incredible strength. Um, as a matter of fact, in the comics, 
at one point in time, uh, he went to uh, Mount Olympus and uh, volunteered to take um, uh, Atlas's burden from him and, and bear the weight of the earth on his shoulders. So he was like, that's how strong he is. He's oh, wow. like, he was able to bear the weight of the earth on his shoulders for a period of time to give Atlas a break. Um, but superhuman uh, strength. Uh, it's that, not just his feet, right? Like stomping and stuff? No, no, no. Okay. You're thinking of, uh, that's actually the Inhumans. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're thinking of an Inhuman character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, this is, uh, yeah, he just has superhuman strength. And I believe in, in the movies, um, he's super strong, but has like the ability to create this incredibly strong punch, kind of like an iron fist or yeah. whatever like that we see. He's it. the Asian guy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, and then the last one that we know is in the movie is Druig. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you here. I knew nothing about this guy. Yeah. Nothing. And I thought since his outfit was black, he was going to be the, the bad guy. <laughs> well, he's kind of the dark sheep of the Eternals family for sure. You know, he definitely has always kind of um, operated, out. you know, to the beat of his own drum. Like he was kind okay. of like just one of those guys that, you know, always thought for himself and really didn't agree with the whole group. Um, definitely wanted to do his own thing, and he was always one that the rest of the Eternals had to kind of convince that this was the right thing to do because he always thought that his way was the right way. And I believe in the movies are doing something very similar where um, he's not happy with the role that, that he as an Eternal has been given, and he wants to be more involved and more active in you know the fate of humanity, yeah. and he's not allowed to, and it bothers him. But... Um, his powers, I believe, in the movies, are very similar to what he had in the comic books. He has uh, telepathic powers, so he can read minds and control minds, and he can do it at a pretty large scale. So he can control the minds of you know hundreds of people uh, simultaneously, and I believe that's the same power he has in the movie as but well. But not the Eternals. Yes. Oh, he can control. Well, I don't know if he can control the minds oh, of the Eternals. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. But in the movie, it looks like he. You, I mean, the clip where he's in like some kind of commune or something he's controlling all those people and yeah. it looks like that yeah we'll that's see yeah. yeah we'll see I'm excited that's a that's cool because i did not know anything about that character at all yeah and i think we'll find I, again you know we're we're making assumptions here we're just basing this on uh trailers that we've seen and some of the stuff that marvel's told us but um you know we know that there's a conflict with with the deviants we know that there's more deviants around than they expected i guess they kind of one of the reasons why the eternals kind of went on sabbatical for hundreds of years. They kind of broke up. So we see scenes in the trailers where they're all together in uniform, fighting together and, and you know, helping humans out together. Yeah. And we see that historically. But then when we, I believe, when we meet the characters in the movie, they're separated. They haven't been together for hundreds of years at yeah. least. And they all have to get back together for one reason or another. Uh, but we know that one of the th reasons they're back is because the demons have started showing up again. You yeah. know, they're now attacking humanity again. And we or were bringing like, back, she says it, she explains it, bringing back half a life with the snap created such an energy that it's um, the awakening. Is that what? She well, it? yeah, there. So I, I believe, and I, I think this is what the movie is going to be telling us is that um, when the celestials are, came to earth, they seeded the earth with a, a celestial uh, seed. So they basically put the the seed of a new celestial in in the earth, and yeah. usually that takes thousands of years for that seed to grow into a full celestial. And I believe part of the plot of the movie is that Thanos, uh, well, the snap that Hulk did to bring all the people back from when Thanos snapped them away, yeah. created such an energy surge that. It sped that process up, and now the celestial host was going to be awakening. And basically, when a celestial is born inside of a planet, it's not very good for the planet. I no. mean, the planet is going to basically, yeah, you know, it's, it basically becomes an egg at that point. In yeah, time. it's like eggshell, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, the, the planet, the egg no doesn't more. survive. It doesn't. So yeah, because... I think that that's one of the things we're told very early on is that the reason why they're getting back together is that in a few days now, this celestial is going to be born, and and you know, Earth is. No, going to be no longer, and you know the the Eternals were like, wait a minute, these are humans that we've guarded over for thousands of years, and we've fallen in love with this, yeah. you know, this planet, and and it's you know the people on this planet, and now we gotta prepare for them to all die, basically, and so yeah. they're they're struggling with that, I think, and that's something we're gonna find out in the movie. Yeah, I can't wait, man. Good information, Professor. I mean, I feel good about going into the movie now. I had some questions about some of the characters, but. I feel good about it. Yeah, that's and, great. And I think as we, we, we've discussed before, you know, this is not going to be your typical action Marvel movie. You no. know, if you're, I mean, I, I mean I'm, I 
argue that there was probably more action in Falcon and the Winter Soldier than there's going to be in this movie. Yeah. Um, there will be fight scenes. You will see them fighting the Deviants. We've seen that in the trailers. But this movie is not all action. It's a very no. thoughtful movie talking about the relationships between the Eternals and the relationships of the Eternals with humankind um, and you know, kind of their relationship with Celestials. And I believe we're going to get introduced to a lot of cosmic kind of theories and beings and kind of understand what's happening outside of Earth. Yeah. Um, I think that's something we're going to do. They gonna unpack, and this is what a lot of the reviews said, they unpack a lot of information on this. And I think that's why... Um, people are a little weary of it, um, and that's why I've been a, a, a little weary of the of the movie. They unpack and they need to go, and, and you can just see it from the trailer where they're back in time when they first arrived, and then how they kind of developed uh, the past history, and then modern time. I mean, that's a lot to jump from time frame to time frame like that. But they got a lot to unpack and um, to tell the story. But again, people, you got to see this movie. It is a catalyst to phase four. I mean, Kevin Feige has said that. Everybody has said that. This movie is very important moving the phase four agenda, right? Hey, we, we've been told that it's possible this, the concept of you know mutations on humans or the mutants themselves gets introduced in this movie. And so... If we're excited about learning about how mutants come about and why there might be mutants on Earth and we want to see mutants in the MCU, this might be an, an important movie. Hopefully that happens, right? Um, I mean, I, this might be one of those movies, Titanium, that we have to watch a couple times because we're going to miss so much the first oh, time we absolutely. see it. There's going to be conversation. What did absolutely. they say? Absolutely. What did they say? What? 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 Yeah. What? You know? What did that mean? Yeah. What did I miss? Absolutely. We're going to see a ton of that, so we'll probably have to see this a couple times to uh, to kind of get the full meaning of it. But I, I think there's going to be a lot in there, and and again, it's you know, if you're going in there thinking this is going to be that you know marvel action movie it, it's not going to be but no it's not going to be Endgame, infinity war or, yeah. or any of those so great all good right. info love it hey let's ring the bell professor all right well that's it for us this week we'll be back next week for more super talk and we'll no longer be in costume <laughs> to get in touch with us on social media hit us up via email super talk podcast at outlook.com or at super talk pod on twitter until then stay super everyone and we're out Oof, wow. You kicked ass on that one. That was a lot. It was a lot. Hey, any questions on YouTube? Put them in the comments. The professor will get to you. Any questions about Eternals? Put it in the comments. Professor will hook you up. Thanks, YouTube. Please subscribe.